Hello and welcome to News Click. Facebook is in the news again for the wrong reasons. A uh, whistleblower, Francis Hogan, has revealed a large trove of information on how the social media giant was profiting as the hate speech and divisive content was surging on its platform. Today we have with us uh, senior journalist Paranjoy Guha Thakurta and our resident tech expert uh, Bappa Sinha. Uh, they're here to discuss what's going on. Uh, um, so Paranjoy, first you, why is this disclosure of information different? We've had them before. You are right. Uh, this story is not new. I mean, when Cyril Sam and I wrote a book called The Real Face of Facebook in India in 2019, uh, even at that time it was rather well known. We published a series of articles in News Click. Thereafter, Washington Post, BuzzFeed, Time Magazine, Aussie.com, Washington Post, New York Times, everybody's been writing about all the hateful speech that Facebook has been propagating. And, and the new part of what Francis Hogan, the whistleblower, said is that Facebook knew very well. The management of Facebook, headed by Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, knew what was happening but did not do anything about it. They turned a blind eye. So the new part of it is that this whistleblower has given concrete examples and many of them from India and many of them pertaining to people from the ruling party, the Bharati Janta Party, whose accounts and fake accounts and real accounts disseminated huge volumes of hateful, fake, false, incendiary speech. And Facebook did very little to constrain or curb them, despite claiming that they had fact checkers and, and even now they are sort of on the back foot when a spokesperson of Facebook was quoted by the BBC's Sotik Biswas, he said the company would do a within quote, deeper and more rigorous analysis of its recommendation systems and do product changes. I mean, everything is a product for them. I mean, the human beings behind the uh, hateful speech, the algorithms, I, I personally think they've just not done enough. You know, Paranjay, why should the users of Facebook care? Uh, do you think, uh, you know, with the millions of users they have in India, their experience of Facebook is, has been roughly the same for many years. Uh, how do you also get users to think that something needs to change? When Facebook started in India, it opened its office in 2011, it had barely 15 million users. Next year, it doubled. Then it was 100 million in 2014. After that, it's been an exponential rise. It was 220 million by the end of 2018. And as of now, we understand there are at least 340 million users of Facebook within India. This is only Facebook. Only in India. Not, no, Facebook in India, not WhatsApp. Or Instagram. Oh. Or Instagram. WhatsApp has more users in India. I mean, I mean, they claim 400 million, somewhere in the region of 450 million. I mean, everybody in India who has a mobile phone with uh, internet connectivity, I mean, almost all of them are using WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. The point is, this is the biggest, the largest user base of Facebook. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the world. They spend 80% or 87% of the budget on fact-checking and tackling misinformation in the US and North America, where they have 10% of the users. They spend a minuscule amount of it. They, by their own admission, has admitted they don't have enough people who understand Hindi and Bangla. Because, I mean, you can expect them to, you know, do all this artificial intelligence and, and uh, um, you know, checked by machines, what they say, machine learning. Mm -hmm. But I think you need human in intervention. Maybe Bappa knows Bappa, more about yes, this. Bappa, uh, yes. Can AI actually solve the problems that Facebook is creating? Well, I, AI, I think, can solve a lot of the problems. But the question is, does Facebook want its AI to solve the problems? I mean, that is the more fundamental question, rather than whether AI can do it or not do it. Um, see, what is Facebook's business model? Facebook claims its business model is to connect people. Right. But how does Facebook really make money? Right. Facebook's 98% of Facebook's revenues come from ads. So Facebook is an advertisement company, right? Uh, and it makes tons of money, right? Just last quarter, it made $30 billion in revenues and roughly $10 billion in profits in one quarter, right? Right. And all of that, 98% right, of that is from ads. 
So uh, Facebook's business is about selling ads. And um, how does it make money? It makes money when you see an ad and when you click on it. So the Facebook's entire technology is driven towards hooking people onto their app and making people spend more and more time on it, right? And uh, the... How do they ensure that more people will come to their platform? Huh. So, so now there has been, uh, Facebook has done, by the way, there is like Facebook's by own admission, they have undertaken like scientific studies. They have, they have recruited behavioral scientists, they have recruited people who understand human psychology to figure out how people spend more time on that, right? And in 2018, a group of researchers from MIT, they published a paper which, where they found that fake news and hate speech Okay. goes viral far more than real news, right? So, so, so they, they, they did this study and this, they looked at, uh, one was uh, stories, and they found that uh, a real news story would travel six times slower than a fake news. Okay. And, and if, you have a, if you have a tweet stream, right? So most people will have a series of posts linking them and creating a narrative. So if you have a tweet stream, let's say of 10 or more, then a fake news or a hate speech tweet stream is likely to travel 20 times more than a re than a fact based okay. news so that is a this is from mit now clearly facebook engineers and facebook management knows this right so th see their goal is to get people hooked on now what makes people hooked on is fake news hate news things which which trigger your inherent prejudices but maybe right. I just add a point to what Bappa said. You see, he's absolutely right. The entire business model of Facebook, and they are a private organization, they're one of the world's biggest private multinational conglomerates, is based, is predicated on their information going viral. So how does one then regulate a business model like right. this? The point is, once it goes viral, they don't care whether it's correct or false, whether it's hateful or not so long as they rake in the advertising bucks. This is really the point. They have, and this is what the whistleblower uh, Francis Hogan has shown, that even when it is violating their own community standards, they tend to be very, very slow in acting. I mean, what was the reason the former policy head, Aki Das, you know, she quit ostensibly for personal reasons, but everybody knows that she took her own sweet time and, and she actually told her colleagues, Ki, don't touch them. They are Bharati Janata Party people. They are, they are well known. The hate speech, Kapil Mishra, T. Raja Singh, this um, uh, right. member of the Legislative, Legislative Assembly of Telangana. You have to add to a point that... And then we had yeah. the opposite example where some people were censored who were not spreading. <laughs> you know, to add to what Bapa was saying, there is a person called Alan Rusbridger. He's the he's a journalist and he's a member of this oversight board which Facebook has set up. It's supposed to uh, include eminent uh, individuals, public figures, including journalists who are all supposed to be independent and they can be critical of Facebook. This is I'm I'm quoting him. What Alan Rusbridger has said is that it is well known that the algorithms reward emotional content that polarizes communities because that makes it more addictive. You know, social media platforms and drug pushers, That's they're right. the only set of the two, two people or two sets of people who call their consumers users. You know, uh, you you see it now. This is exactly and, and then the, like there are there Papa, are, you, there were, are you were telling me about how <coughs> the groups form on Facebook, how communities form because Facebook in I think 2018 decided that they would push friends and family circles, but it backfired. It became more angry. The platform became angrier because of that push. Uh, how well, does that it, work? It became it backfired publicly, but fa like I'm saying that the Facebook's business model is what Facebook's business model is. So internally, they very well knew what their algorithms were going to do. They, they were fully aware of it. It is not it is not a quirk, it is not a bug. It is what the algorithm is supposed to do, which is get people hooked on. And this is not just an India-specific phenomena. All over the world, neo-Nazi groups in Germany, which were banned by the German government, mm -hmm. Facebook did not pull down their sites. No, it, it was in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, where after after New York Times, after the media, after United Nations bodies criticized them, that's when this took action.
What happened in New Zealand where, uh, you know, there was a live uh, Facebook uh, broadcast of a person who was shooting down, gunning down people outside uh, uh, a mosque in, 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 in New Zealand. And, and you see, they are know exactly that their system is abused. They are extremely negligent about taking prior action. Now, they claim they have all these fact checkers, they have fact checking partners in English, 11 different languages. They claim they have tens of thousands of people. But the fact is, is that enough? Are they taking action? Because these fact checkers, even when they point out that this is hateful, do something about it, it's up to Facebook whether they take it down or not. And, and, and I'll give you one very interesting quote mm -hmm. which came out in this Francis Hogan, uh, the, the uh, disclosures. In 2019, a Facebook researcher wrote that I have seen more images of dead people in the past three weeks than I've seen in my entire life. This is the kind of stuff that goes viral and this is... Papa, how did this come to be? How did this viewer end up with more ghastly images than ever before? The, well, the, even in the in the in this uh, Hogan re revelations, right, um, they, there is this story about a couple of Facebook researchers who set up a dummy account. They, they impersonated a Indian 21-year-old female in North India and they just created the account and then let it be. They, they didn't interact with that account at all. And what they found was that account within days was filled with pro-Modi and anti-Muslim posts. So, so that just without any inter manual intervention, just purely Facebook algorithms working for a new user, you get bombarded with anti-Muslim uh, speech in India. Right. And, and I'll give you another right. example. 12 hours of live video was put up on a site that fanned all kinds of conspiracy theories and they were all of a communal nature about the death, the suicide, the unfortunate suicide of Sushant Singh Rajput. This is the kind of trash that goes viral and they do little or nothing to constrain or check it. And, and uh, like Sushant Singh Rajput, look at the, the international connections. If you follow the Sushant Singh Rajput conspiracy, they have borrowed heavily from QAnon, which okay. is an American site. Now, the FBI told that uh, QAnon was a terrorist threat. Mm -hmm. And Facebook still did not pull it down for 13 months. So um, in, in Germany, where, where the German government banned these groups, Facebook still allowed them. In India, where the government actually promotes this kind of hate, sp hate speech, it's, it's great. Like in, India is a marriage made in heaven, right? For Facebook and BJP. Can I give you some figures about how huge I, they are? I had a question. Yes, actually, please go on. Facebook has claimed that their AI catches 90% of hate speech. Others, uh, independent people say, uh, 5%. Yeah. How can I mean, the number be so different? <laughs> yeah, clearly like Mark Zuckerberg is lying, right? But uh, for example, uh, India, like Poranja was saying, India is Facebook's biggest market, right? Uh, Facebook, 340 million Facebook and 450 million WhatsApp. So Facebook did not have AI modules which worked in Hindi and Bengali for detecting violence, calls for violence and hate speech till this year. It's only after all this outrage they have put on these Hindi and Bengali modules. So, so they simply don't care about you curbing. You mean the Delhi riots and the West Bengal election? Huh. It's only after that they put the Hindi and Bengali modules. It has been very well established that the riots of February 2020 in northeastern Delhi, the, the, the fake news in the run-up to the elections in West Bengal and uh, other parts of the country, that they did little or nothing about it. They were extremely negligent. In fact, to use a quote from uh, um, um, one of the American publications, they said they are celebrating violence. They're celebrating communal hatred. And you know how important it is? We in India, we have a population of 1.35 billion. And the median age of India is around 27. I mean, half your population is below that age, roughly. And we know that young people are far, they're far bigger users of the social media than relatively uh, older people. This has been very, very conclusively demonstrated. About more than half of this population is today using 
these social media platforms and they are monopolies. And so you can imagine in a country like India, where in most parts of the country, there are more SIMs, that is subscriber identity mm -hmm. modules than human beings. I mean, there are, according to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, you have over a billion, 1.15 uh, billion SIMs. So it's not just confined anymore to the big metros or the large cities or even the small towns. It's spread across India. That's the unfortunate part. And as Ravish Kumar pointed out, an entire generation of people are growing up hating I'm, I'm another to, community I'm, I'm trying to, because they are growing up in WhatsApp University. And, and, and these, How these do you solve this problem? Would there be an independent oversight possible? Uh, would Facebook, would public pressure work on Facebook? What would work? It, it, it has to be a regulatory solution. Look, frankly, Facebook should be shut down, right? I mean, but it's not going to be shut down. So, so Facebook in the US, there is bipartisan support, both from the Republicans and the Democrats, to do something, and 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 to to basically use anti-monopoly laws to break it up, right? At the very least. So, <coughs> without that kind of uh, action, Facebook left to itself will do what it has been doing for the last see decade. <laughs> Bapa, we want Facebook to yeah. be closed down, but it seems, as he rightly points out, most unlikely that Facebook will be closed down. Where Facebook uh, was set up very recently, you know. I mean, look, it was set up as recently as 2004. So it's what? It's barely seven. I mean, it's, it's what, 17 years old or a little right. more than 17 years old. Now, it's one of the world's so, biggest, so uh, one's biggest conglomerates. Now, the point he's made, there's pushback from all kinds of lawmakers in the US. There's pushback from Australia. New Zealand, Germany, France, Canada. But here in India, we pretend that we are acting tough. Then WhatsApp, please do something about the originator of the first, uh, first content. But the fact That's is, right. Facebook has tied up with Geo Platforms, which is a part of India's biggest privately owned co corporate conglomerate. They're investing big bucks in Geo. And in my opinion, uh, the government will just keep shouting but do nothing, unfortunately. For example, with the free basics, the regulator did step in and say, no, you can't have that. Uh, would, would, would you say that the regulator... See, see for, for free basic, there was a coalition of forces from the free software movement, from, from activists who cared about free speech and all, right. but also from industry groups who did not want to get tied into Facebook's monopoly. Because with free basics, you could have an entire like large section of the population whose access to the internet will be through Facebook. I mean, it violated the basic principles of net neutrality. And even the telecom regulatory authority, but didn't they lobby? How hard they lobby? The amount of money Facebook spent, they put up hoardings all over, they, they put advertisements in the front pages of all the newspapers, saying, hello, why are you after us? We are giving you something free. It's like telling you, you know, I'm giving you free food, right. but I'll only give you the kind of free food that I want to give you. Right. Take it or leave it. Or here is a library. I'll allow you to go into this library. This part of it is free, but that part you have to pay for. I mean, look, in many parts of the world, Facebook is virtually synonymous with the Internet. I'm thankful it's not yet happened in India, but they're very, very powerful. But, but the pushback for net neutrality also came from the industry. And that's why the, the, the TA try did not let it happen. Now, the thing is, uh, in this case, uh, the industry doesn't care, right, about, about hate speech and, and about um, propagating BJP and RSS uh, philosophy. But in the West, uh, the, uh, like in the US, in, the Euro, in Europe, there is concern about Facebook promoting this kind of very divisive agenda. Right, right. I mean, but in Trump, India, they in are... Trump, in, 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 right. in the Trump, case of Trump. And, and, in, and in Germany and in France, promoting uh, the neo-Nazis and the and uh, Mary Le Pen's party and all that, right? So, so there is concern there. What may actually bring its downfall is Facebook has been lying not just about these things, but they've been also lying about their ad numbers, right? So Facebook actually fudged their reach numbers. So which may actually affect other businesses. You know, that may hurt. Okay. That you know, because there was a period, Bapa, if you remember, when some major advertisers pulled their advertising from Facebook. Now, that would, uh, you know, hurt. Mr. Okay, so Zuckerberg. their ability to keep taking Indian audiences or audiences elsewhere for granted and disturbing the social harmony and changing the, sort of influencing the political outcomes, that would get limited by their business Well, uh, there is one more thing. The, the, the silver <laughs> lining, the silver lining is that the young generation, my daughter, that generation is not in Facebook. 
and they right. hate Facebook. They're and right. they're not going to get under Facebook. Okay. So Facebook will, over a generation, Look, die a natural death. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I wish uh, I was as optimistic as Bappa is. I'm not. You know, I mean, I mean, let's understand something. There are some people who actually see Facebook as something very, very useful. Okay, I can put up my family pictures. You know, but I'm going on a holiday. I'll put all my pictures. I remember people's birthdays. So, uh, there is a large section of people, and I don't want to delude myself into believing that a large section of people who are using face Facebook don't use it uh, because they perceive something, quote unquote, useful, friendly. Mm -hmm. And they often don't realize how these algorithms work, how they often live in an echo chamber, they're shut out from a whole lot of other information because, and, and how they're trying to influence not just the what they buy and the clothes they wear and the food they eat or their favorite music or their favorite actors, but the way they think, their political preferences, their behavior. And as people like Soshana Zuboff and others have written, trying to predict their behavior. Mm -hmm. How will you predict? And and and, they, and and that is really not just predictive behavior, but even nudge you in a certain direction. Right. That's to gone. use your using habits to feed you to the advertisers. Uh, well, to to, 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 to influence, influence your, your behavior. To to get All you right. to buy things which you not otherwise. And influence support. your political All preferences. Right. And, so with all these things came out during the Cambridge Analytica stuff, right? But Cambridge Analytica was just the tip of the iceberg. Cambridge Analytica was a company which was like a, a partner to Facebook, which was doing it. And at that time, Facebook kind of kind of protected itself, saying that, oh, they're a third party. They did bad things. It's not us. But it is Facebook. Like, the, the Facebook business is, is what Cambridge Analytica, we thought, only right. was limited to Cambridge Analytica. Okay. But now, the extent of information which is out there makes it very clear that something is deeply amiss with this platform, and that it is actually changing the course of societies. It is actually reiterating and emphasizing the worst fears that people had about the way it abuses its monopoly position as a social media platform and seeks to manipulate human behavior, political preferences, and, and, and human psychology and try and predict it. So all of that has been now reiterated and re-emphasized by the Francis Hogan uh, disclosures. And okay. it, it is making an impact. Like, for example, in the US, Facebook's market cap has dropped by $200 billion since these things came out, right? In the last two months, just in the last two months. And but Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, born on the 14th of May, 1984, age 37, his net worth in Indian rupees is over 11,000 crores. It's personal net worth. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, thanks, thanks very much for joining us, Bappa and uh, Paranjoy. Uh, thank you for watching NewsClick. Do subscribe to NewsClick and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.